questions have started coming in about Silhouette Studio V5. It seems like more users are downloading it and trying to get accustomed to it. We're going to talk about Silhouette Studio V5 print and cut and the puzzle panel today. We're just going to tie it all together. We're going to come up with an Easter puzzle for the kiddos. If you want to see the end project, make sure you stick around to the end. This is going to focus on the software. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success and if you are trying to learn about the Silhouette Studio software or the Silhouette machines, you are in the right place. We're not going to waste a ton of time here on the introduction, but I do want to let you know that if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section and I will do my best to get to answering them. Now let's get started. When you open up Silhouette Studio V5, you are going to open up to the home page. That is the first difference you're going to notice. I have covered this in another video, so we are going to go up to this button here, click on the design tab, and that will take you to the screen that you're mostly familiar with. This is where the V4 would open up to. Now, when you look around, you will notice that things do look a little bit different. I have my starter mode on only because I like the larger icons. If you click this button up here, it turns the starter mode off and it looks more similar to what the V4 used to look like. I like my icons bigger, so I just leave this clicked on. It's easier on my old eyes. Now in V4, if you were going to do a print and cut, you would go to the page setup panel and it would have been on a third tab over here. You can see that there are only two tabs now. The print and cut has been moved down here to its own tab. You can click on that. It'll bring up your print and cut panel. You need to check this box to enable the registration marks and you can adjust your settings here. I always leave mine at the default settings. It does recommend that for best results, but you can play around with the registration marks and see how far you can push the machine and still get an accurate reading. After the settings, you have the option to restore the defaults. If you decide that it's not really working out well for you, just click this little button. It will take you right back to where you started from. Underneath that, they have added a print button, which is pretty cool. Down at the bottom, you have the option to enable print bleed. That takes the color of your edges out just a little bit, and it helps to get a more accurate cut if you don't want the white showing around your cut at all. At the top, there is a second tab, and that is for the barcode. I have a video on this with the V4 version, and I will link that in the description if you want to take a look at everything you can do with the barcode. But just know that that is in the second tab. I do believe that is a feature of an upgraded edition, and I will have to check and see exactly which upgrade that's available in. Now I have enabled the registration marks. My page is set up to letter size, which does match my printer. That's very important. You want the media size to match the document size in your printer. Now that the page is all set up and we have found all of the buttons, we can go up to file and down to merge. That's going to bring our image onto the page that we're already working on. If you were to choose open, it would open up a completely different document. This is what I'm looking for. I'm going to double click on the PNG. It shows that it is loading and it has come in. It is ginormous. So I'm going to select the image, come up here and enter any number that is reasonable. I'm gonna go with six inches, click on enter. That's going to shrink it down and it looks like it has disappeared. If we click on this little minus button, that's going to zoom us out so we can find the image or you can simply click on this button here that is center to page and regardless of where it is at on the screen, it's going to bring it front and center to the middle of your page. Now we can click on this button here, it's fit to window and that's going to bring it right back to the size we started at. With print and cut, you want to make sure that all of these hatched areas are clear. The grayed out areas, are, they're referred to as hatched areas. These darker black lines are your registration marks. That's where the machine is going to scan so that it can decide where to cut. When you are doing print and cut, you want to make sure that your 
cut border is on. The cut border is the red line that goes all the way around here. Typically, the cut border is closer to the edge of your media, but with print and cut, it is limited. So you want to have the cut border on because if your design is closer to the edge, then it's not going to be able to get to bits and pieces of your design. So placement of your image on your print and cut page is very important in order to get an accurate cut. Now back to this design. This design was meant to be personalized. It is a name plaque and I am making one of these for each of the grandbabies for their Easter baskets. I'm going to type out a name, open up my fonts. This is the textile panel and I've been using Pink Girl for all of my Easter basket stuffing so I'm going to go with that. We can move that right up onto the name plaque and scale it down, get it set in place, and of course I'm going to switch up the color. I like to grab the eyedropper when I'm adding to an existing image so that I can select a color that is already in the design and I know that it's going to match nicely. You can see the color changing as I move the eyedropper around that's going to allow me to select the exact color that I want and I think that looks good but I think it would look better with an offset so let's click on the offset panel here I'm going to choose offset not internal offset just regular offset you can see the red lines that came in that's way too big I'm going to bring that way down I just want a small white outline to make that name pop a bit. Let's go with 0 0.04. I can click apply and now it is the offset that is selected so I can come up to my color fill panel here at the top. I'm going to fill it with white and I think that makes a really big difference but if we are going to make sure that everything matches let's grab the eyedropper again instead of going white white Let's grab a light cream color from the ears and I think that looks a little bit better. However, I don't like the outline showing. If we go to print this, in the print preview, you can see that the outline is not here and that is good, that's what we want. It is showing on our design page. If you want to eliminate the lines on the design page, you can select all of your pieces Go up to your line color here, click on the down arrow and select this one. Then it's going to be no line color and I think that just looks a little bit better while we're working with it. Now if the cut lines are set to black or red or whatever the case may be, you need to make sure that they are set to 0, 0.0 up here or else they will print. Let's demonstrate that real quick. Let's set our lines back to black. You can see the outline is back. If we just click the up arrow, they're set to 0.5 and we can go to file and print. That's going to bring up the print preview again. And now you can definitely see that those outlines are there and that is not what we want. So again, it's okay if they are on during the design process as long as your line thickness is set to zero. If it's set to zero, it won't print anything higher than zero, it will. Now I'm going to select all of this, right click and group it together so nothing moves around on me. I like the way this looks. I do, however, want a border for my puzzle so I'm going to select a rectangle from the drawing tools I'm going to hold down my shift key and pull that out and that's going to make it a perfect square. Now we can no longer see our image. Let's select this and send it to the back. We can select both of these and center them. This is coming together nicely. Let's select our square. And instead of using the eyedropper this time, we can just go to the color that it is already picked out. This is the same color as the letters. Now our background matches better, but I didn't really want the pink background. I just wanted a frame for around my puzzle. Let's make sure our square is selected. Choose the internal offset. And this time we are going to increase our distance. Let's go with 0.2 inches. My corners are squared up. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to go ahead and click 
click on apply. Now I can grab both of those pieces, right click and make a compound path. And there is the pink frame that I was looking for. When I was experimenting with this design earlier, I decided that I also like it if the actual print overlaps the frame a little bit. So I'm gonna pull that out. Again, I'm going to select everything and center it. And you can see that the little flowers and leaves on the sides overhang the border. And I think that is just a cute little touch. Let's open up the puzzle panel. And the first thing you're going to need to do is select puzzle area. You need to choose which part of this you want to puzzle. Now, if you take this, right click and group it together and choose puzzle selected shape, all of this turns into a solid color and your image has disappeared and that can be quite upsetting. However, we have our undo button up at the top. Let's just click on that because we have made a mistake and this is how we fix that. We need to puzzle a shape, not the image that we want to print. The easy easiest way to get our shape for puzzling is to copy just the frame that we created. So let's right click and ungroup this. Now we can select the frame and duplicate that. Now we do not want the frame, we just want the outside box. So let's right click and release the compound path. We can pull away the inner square, right click and delete. We don't need that. Now let's select all of our pieces, right click and group these together so they don't move around on us. If we set this right on top here, you can see it is the exact same size and this is the shape that we need to puzzle. Once it's selected, we can click on puzzle selected shape. We can choose how many rows and columns we want. I am making this for smaller children, so I am going to leave it at a four by four. That's going to create 16 pieces. Now these puzzle pieces look very complicated, not exactly what you would want for a little one. And you can fix that by grabbing a hold of these sliders here and pulling them down. I am going to take the curve all the way down to zero. And I'm going to take the wobble all the way down to zero. And this is going to make the puzzle pieces much more uniform. At the bottom, you can see you can randomize the selected puzzle. If you click on that, it just puts the pieces in different positions gives you a few different shapes and you can choose which one you like the best. This is what is actually going to cut. We do need to get it set on top of our image, but we do not want it to interfere with the print. So let's go up to our color fill here. It is selected. We can just click on this one here and now there is no fill color and our lines are set to zero. So this will not interfere with the print. We can select both of these pieces and click on the center button. That's going to line them up perfectly. Let's move them to the center of the page. Now when we go over to the send page, everything is set to cut and that is not what we want. Really, we only want the puzzle pieces to cut. The easiest way to accomplish this is to select all of your pieces and ignore selected lines. This is different than before. I have had a lot of people ask about these functions as well. Now you can see nothing is going to cut. I can select just the puzzle, click on tool one, use all selected lines, and I grabbed the wrong layer. Let's ignore those. I moved the image out of the way so that I could select the puzzle. However, now we need to go back to the design page to select both of these and center them again. Head back to the send page now, and this is ready to cut. You can see the outline and the puzzle pieces will cut. We can go to the design page, go to file and down to print, and we can check our print preview. Let's go ahead and get this printed out and cut. I chose to create this project with printable magnetic paper. I ran it through my Epson EcoTank 2720 and the colors came out amazing. Now the kiddos can put these together on a floor, a table, or the refrigerator and I think they are going to absolutely love it. Now go create something amazing and I will see you in the next video.